Hello, welcome to this commentary that I'll be doing on a no-fake game that I played in May of 2014 with I am George and I am Mr. Beast. So we decided to start up a no-fake game. Our first couple attempts didn't go very far. The first game we played ended around round 60-something uh, because Mr. Beast's cat allegedly knocked over his router. That was solved with some duct tape on the router, supposedly. Who knows? Next up, we played a game to round 70-something, took a sleep break, and Mr. Beast's Xbox turned off somehow. And there was actually a game I played with him in 2013 on the PlayStation 3 console where he supposedly tripped on his Ethernet cord while going to take a shower. So he's full of these colorful excuses, as you could tell. Anyways, so we played in May 2014. Uh, George and Beast were lobbying to get me to play with them, first on the PS3 console. And I told them, I'm not going to have any of that horse shit. That console is shit. I can't see anything. It's horrible. Why play on an inferior product when you can play on the Xbox and uh, just have it better? I don't know if Beast had an Xbox at the time, but eventually he got an Xbox, so we said, all right, let's start up a game. And they played several no-fake games before they finally approached me. They played, of course, with Blade in 2013, and they had a very successful game at the time. Got to round 120, it was with boosting, but at the time it was still impressive. And then they played a few more games with a lot of people. Uh, the one person I know they played with was Tyler. Tyler Boss, I believe. You can see him on some of Mr. Beast's videos on his channel. And apparently their games with Tyler didn't go too well. They might have made it to around 120 a couple times, but always around the 90s and the early 100s, like uh, Engineer Arena and Fish and Barrel, Tyler would start to struggle. There was actually a, a phrase that was kind of popular, say, in 2014, where uh, Beast would say, we're going to be Baba Boosting, <laughs> and that's uh, the origins for that is with Tyler in a no-fake game. Uh, Beast was apparently upset with him. So we ended up playing, and it was going really well. Uh, you know, I thought I was going to maybe struggle a bit on 96 and the arenas that supposedly people like Tyler struggled on. But, you know, uh, and, you know, sure, I could have played better, but I didn't steal any lives or come too close to doing so. And uh, so that was good. We were playing really well and above my expectations. So uh, f freeze the frame. Fr freeze the frame right here. We're going to do a little DOA over analysis. Okay, so George, nine lives. Who should grab the tank? <laughs> Not George, right? Probably green. He could use a couple lives and he's host. Usually host grabs it. Possibly red because red is low on lives as well, relatively speaking. So let's play the footage. Oh, George picks up the vehicle. Let's listen to the live reaction from Mr. Beast at the time. Good luck. What? All right. You're banned, kid. You're banned from everything. You're not even... That two times? You gotta hold on to it. Last one you're gonna have for a long time. Then round 117 rolled around and we got invisible monkeys. Now we had an idea we might get invisible monkeys and usually when you have that idea after round 80 you review the footage yada yada and you say okay do we keep playing and you know deal with the invisible monkeys or do we quit now? And we decided to keep playing just because of the previous disconnections and whatnot. We didn't want to quit just because there was a chance we had invisible monkeys. So we went there and we had them and there was a whole debacle with that. Where Mr. Beast was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been here enough times. I've failed enough times. I'm going to make my lives to where I have nine lives and a lot of equipment. And you guys should do the same. And George was kind of like, eh, I'm going to have to agree with Beast on this one. So it was like a two-on-one situation for me. But, you know, I, I kind of argued with him a bit. And I was saying, why max out your stuff when we didn't leave 116 like that? Why max out your stuff? end up beating 120 and then kind of have a tainted record where it's like oh they're the one team that beat 120 but they did it with the help of the invisible monkey so i kind of argued that position and he didn't want to hear any of it you know he's like oh i'm i'm the best player in the game nobody else could do this so i don't know he was saying some weird stuff but so uh, i didn't boost up my lives all the way up i ended up going to 120 with three lives i left 116 with five lives so I had less lives. I don't know if that was intentional to counterbalance what Beast was doing with his lives. I don't quite remember. But it could have also been some sort of issue with the glitch where I died more than I, I wanted to. 
And also on round 120, we had a glitched out vehicle, a tank, and I immediately picked it up intentionally. Because my thought process was, this is, you know, enough of this cheap shit. If we, had a, uh, if we had a glitch out tank in the beginning of a round, where we were playing legitimately, we would probably heavily consider picking it up, rather than saving it for the boss. Because when you have a tank on the map, there's all sorts of issues with that when you have a glitch out tank. Because that means you're not going to get any more vehicles that spawn in for the rest of a 20 minute round. And you're not going to get item pickups like barrels and wonder off walls, which really help you. So we ended up playing the boss and, of course, we were demoralized from the past hour of arguing and invisible monkey baloney, and we ended up game overing, of course. So there was kind of hard feelings from that, but overall the game went smoothly, like I said, and there was really no hard feelings until that last arena. So about a month went by and we decided to run another game, and this game went very smoothly, the first 95 rounds, and then suddenly on round 96, I accidentally drove Beast into a pole setup with my tank. Now, if you review the footage, it's not really my fault. You could say, okay, maybe you were a little reckless driving it, but whatever the case may be, it was one small accident. My thought process as soon as it happened was, grab your gems, be quiet, and let's keep playing. You have seven lives, everything's fine. But Beast took it very personally for some reason the action of me killing him unintentionally and uh, he immediately got a tank 10 seconds after me somehow the, that's the way it works I guess and drove his tank into me into a corner and DOA1 if you're not familiar if you drive your teammate into a corner with a tank you could kill them but you need to be very precise with how you do it he could have easily killed George and that would have been totally hilarious because George would have lost his marbles but instead he killed me and oh man my blood was boiling and I, I heavily considered quitting right then and there, but I'm not the type of person who's going to do that. But it, I was heavily considering it because it's, it's a line you don't cross. You don't intentionally screw over yourself and your teammates because of one little... It's not even a mistake, just one little accident, you know? That's bound to happen over the course of a long game. It's not like I was constantly killing him with vehicles and just being a terrible vehicle driver like some people are it just was one little slip up and he was putting our game at risk by killing me so i lost a life and in a no fake game you may not earn that life back all the way up to 120 and that obviously could hurt your chances at beating 120 so it was completely counterintuitive if you ask me and was absurd but somehow he, he was trying to act like i was in the wrong and uh you know george was kind of just laughing the whole time Oh man! <laughs> oh my god! And we ended up playing the rest of 96 and it, it went very well for me, apart from getting killed by him. And then the next arena. George and I, I, I must mention, before this game started, George and I reviewed footage from our original game in May 2014. Because we were 100% in and focused on the idea of beating 120. And then we were on the Cows Arena, as mentioned before, and Mr. Beast had his mic unplugged since the incident on round 96. And he was playing really poorly for some reason on Cows. I guess he was angry or something, I don't know. Then eventually he died, fell down to, I think, three lives or something. He uh, decided to end the game. Host end the game. I saw that on my screen. I said, wow. My uh, second reaction was, let me reach over to my PVR real quickly so I can record this absurdity. So I got a little glimpse of it, and I guess he ended up pulling the plug or turning off his console during the host and the game screen, because he's like, oh shit, man, like, <laughs> gotta get rid of this. <laughs> so I was just totally, you know, like, what the hell? To waste 12 hours? And I think we took a sleep break, actually, sometime, so more than 12 hours, actually. But 12 hours of game time. And it was just like, really? So we haven't played since then, not to say that... I wouldn't have, or he wouldn't have, I don't know, but he just kind of stopped playing DOA altogether, played a few solo games, and then a few months later, I bl when was it, a few months later? No, a year later, he played with Frenzy, and they ended up uh, beating 120 No Fate in a three-player match on the PS3. At this point, Beast didn't have an Xbox. So that, you know, that's good for them that they, they ended up beating it, but, you know, maybe, maybe it would have happened a year earlier if Beast uh, had his situation under control. On the subject of Beast and Frenzy, there was actually a four-player game we played around the same period as my No Fates with them. So it was summer 2014-ish. 
It was George, Beast, Frenzy, and myself in a four-player match. I think we started up two games like that. And for some reason, we quitted the game around round 40 because George was all upset about some sort of thing. I, I don't know. George played tons of DOA games with the shittiest of players, the most mediocre of players. And then he gets a game with, you know, some of the top talent at the time period. And he just kind of puts that aside. Nah, I, I think I'll play a four-player game with mm, CP3, you know, so it just uh, it makes you think. Like, you had a good opportunity there to do something special in DOA player round 160 no life stolen something like that and throw it away for what i understand if you don't play the game that often but for someone like him who played the game constantly and just to, to throw a game like that aside for no good reason speaking of george and beast there's actually a really interesting dynamic between the two of them because a lot of people often consider them to be some sort of iconic duo and uh doa teammates and friends but there was always an underlying rivalry between the two of them. I would be in a party chat with Mr. Beast and he would be saying something about George and uh, the vice versa was also true. So it was definitely an interesting scenario where they were teammates doing some really impressive things. You know, Beast had two 160s both with George and uh, they also played some other games. So, you know, of course, they're no fig games. And they really were able to accomplish a lot uh, later into the game's life cycle and 2013 and 2014 a little bit in 2015 but at the same time they were kind of always deep down at odds with one another and trying to one-up each other so that's just an interesting observation i'm going to show a couple of bonus clips here which i originally released as a video way back when when the game was played but then i quickly made it unlisted and this first part is going to be when myself derek george and uh, i use time warp we're in a party chat together and Time Warp was kind of talking about no fate, and uh, George had a pretty funny response to him. And then a couple other clips from our games that we played, and uh, yeah. I don't think you understood. I think I don't think you understood what I said. I think you'll be on the fucking ground. Okay. <laughs> Dude, we all Reviving. think things, George. Everyone's <laughs> toast. This <laughs> toast. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Ever seen that before? I have certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> stop moving, stop moving, stop moving. I'm not moving at all. You might be asking, why, why'd you make this video, Rambo, many years later? Well, uh, let's just say there might be a possible DOA, no fate, but what you make reunion party on the DOA horizon? Allegedly? Who knows? Thanks for watching.